Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run on this week's feature Grandmaster and, may I add, my final Grandmaster for Solo Conqueror, which is the Corrupted. Long-time viewers of the channel will know I don't like this one. I, I kind of said I wouldn't do it, but here we are. And I needed one more for Conqueror, so why not? I'm doing it on Arc Titan, which kind of made it a little bit more difficult. Uh, but actually repeatable. It was more difficult to learn, but once I learned it, it very repeatable. So you'll see I'm using Wither Horde. I'm using Staccato for Overloads. I'm using Storm Chaser. I've got Taken Spec on my Staccato and my Storm Chaser. We're running weak and, weak and Clear and Solo Operative on the class item. Uh, Counter Charge with Scav on Leg Armor. I've got Heart of Innermost Light with double arc resist and striking light, which gives me damage resistance when I'm sprinting. Unstoppable Nade Launcher, Overlord Scout Rifle on arms, and we've got uh, Linear Fusion, Ammo Finder, and High Energy Fire on my uh, on my helmet. Now you can see all the fragments and aspects I'm using for my subclass, but the main kind of things that I ran here that are quite important, and you'll see here with this Overlord. Storm nades, and I'm running thruster instead of a barricade. So once I throw my grenade and then use thruster, that activates. You'll see there the empowered melee, empowered grenade, empowered barrier. That activates uh, uh, heart of innermost light. Which once you use one of your abilities, it empowers the other two and increases the recharge rate. To go with that, we're running 90 discipline along with the hundred. Uh, resilience. So as you'll see a couple of times in this video, maybe not at the boss, but you w you are going to get hit. There's no getting away from it. You are going to get hit. You just need to be in the right places so that you can... those hits don't beca become fatal. So that boss there, what I like to do is stick a weather horde on him and because we've got weak and clear, he now will take yellow bar. Uh, sometimes I throw my grenade at him and then get the thrust that I get the more powerful grenade but get the recharge on, on everything. Uh, and then I hit him with uh, I hit him with Storm Chaser. I'm, I'm not too worried about abusing my heavy and again, long time viewers of the channel will know I've always preached be careful of your heavy ammo. We don't really use it a ton here. What we need it for more than anything else is the Hive Ogre. So when we get here, what you want to do is put a Weather Horde. This is probably the first real strategy in this strike. Put a Weather Horde in between the first two Scions on the left, and then just shoot the Scion on the right. Come straight over here, and you want to... This is probably the biggest thing in here, in this area. It's not the shielded... Uh, the shielded cabal it's the ads second biggest thing is in this first wave is the boss's uh the boss's little orbs that they, that he throws at you now i actually thought he no, what i like to do is keep the boss over the other side and i i don't realize he was over here so what i'm going to do is stick a weather horde on the other champion the other sorry uh taking cabal and then what i like to do is be over the completely opposite side from this other boss. Now the side I actually like to be on is closest to where the ads are going to spawn and where that is it's off to the right of the main terminal so we're in the right place here. Wherever the main term terminal is you want to be to the right of it. And we're just going to, as you can see, you can grab the orbs through the wall. Be careful of those these little orbs. They're, they're a bit of a nightmare. And then when you stick the boss Put as many as you feel comfortable. I put I put about four in. Normally put about four in. You see there, I put a few, a bit more. And then because he's weakened, and because we've got taken spec on my scout rifle, uh, we just finish him off with that. Then you're right here. Like like I said, you want to be to the right of the terminal when you're dealing with him, and so you can attack the ad. So with a horde on one side. Uh, a weather horde on one side, a weather horde on the other side. So I do far side first, and then I put the next weather horde behind uh, 
there's up there, there's like a little uh let's finish him off there there's like a little uh pillar i put the weather horde behind there and then i put the storm grenade right in the center and then literally this part of the, this activity see here i'm gonna go on the inside just stay away from him uh weather horde grenade dodge to my thruster and as you'll see, it gives me back my thruster and my grenade a little bit faster. Just look at you see where he is. I can see he's taking damage. He's dead. So, I know a lot of people don't like this part of the strike. And I, I here, I get it. I don't like this. I don't like the strike, really. The first wave, where I was, where I was picking up the orb for that first wave of ads. You are actually about as safe as you can be in this area when you're behind that that cover with it where I was. If you look back at the video where I was standing, you're pretty safe there. And then it's about duking the, the major, the guy that throws the axiom bolts. It's about duking him, right? Keep him on the opposite side of the arena from you, but make sure you rotate until you're close to where the ads are gonna spawn, which as I've said is to the right of the main terminal. The second wave, again you want to clear the ads because the scions in here are probably the biggest issue, right? In this, in this arena. The ads themselves don't have a stomp mechanic, right? So what you can do is you can run around the area with an orb and you can jump over them if you need. Now, you've got to be careful when you go on the inside where the taken orbs are. You've got to be careful there. But I like to do that if I need to run past them. When they put their shield down to bash you, they, they will change direction to shoot you. But you're still pretty safe. So once you've cleared that arena, doing it the way I've done it, hopefully. Now, this door will open. You'll have an unstoppable up here, which, as you've seen in the gameplay, we've killed. I like to put Wither Horde on them from distance. Uh, and and then and then chain my, my uh, grenade. There's two Arc Knights here. It will chain onto the Arc Knights and the three Acolytes. Every now and again, what will happen, and I can't remember if it happened in this run, it happened a ton, one of the Acolytes will just, like, bug out inside one of the walls. So be very careful when you're going past here. Uh, if you uh, listen, because you can hear them, right? So, as you can see... Uh, Doing the chain storm grenade thing actually took out one of the Arc Knights. So I'll throw this. He actually jumped nearly out the way here. And I thought the Arc Grenade would have kept on him. But he just got his shield back so fast. I'm, I was quite surprised at that. So I'll get my first. I've got my shoulder charge. Now the thing about shoulder charge is obviously it's Arc. It not only breaks him, it blinds him. You know, so he's like, oh... I, I, what's happening? I don't know. Oh, I'm dead. So you can use that and thruster, as you can see, brings gives you all that back faster. So now what we've got, we've got an unstoppable. We've got un two unstoppables in this area, a bunch of arc knights. See there, I stick him with that, and then I'm. What I'm going to do is I'm because I miss normally what I do with this guy is I normally manage to stick the grenades. I'll just put another Weather Horde on him. I normally manage to stick Weather Horde on. When you stick Weather Horde on an Unstoppable, it gives you two stops. So, I normally put Unstoppable onto him, and then I throw my nade. Right? I went too far here. I've activated the the Shrieker. Got to be careful of doing that. The two Shriekers, these Shriekers normally are... See, that should have deactivated him. I went back quite far. The first Shrieker we came up against as well done something really weird that it doesn't normally do. Normally you can move up this like a a line that separates like the left area and the stairs. And you'll have seen me walking up to it. Normally you can activate the Shrieker uh, and it won't shoot at you. But this time, again, a couple of weird things. I don't know if it's because there was background maintenance today or whatever. Uh... Oh, they're prepping for background maintenance, I think. 
But the kind of weird thing was, I had to go onto the stairs to activate the Shrieker, which normally never happens. Well, this Shrieker that we're, we're going to take out now, we should be safe coming here. You know, I like to take the two on stops uh, first. And then, as you can see, Weather Horde. Put a Weather Horde on, on it, and then I hit it with two... Uh, I hit it with two... With, uh, two storm chasers, and that, that takes the Shrieker out. I'm doing that for quickness. You don't have to use, you know, because as you can see, we've got a loving storm chaser, and you're not guaranteed to get tons of heavy. So, where we were to start with, on, on those two little rocks, when we move down, that is the, that's the, the trigger for that first Shrieker. The rock I was again, uh, rock I was behind just there. That is the trigger for the second, for the second shrieker. The trigger for this last shrieker is the rock just in front of us, right there. So what I try and do, I can see I've got heavy there. Probably only get two out of it. Uh, as I stick, and then you see there, just happen with two storm chaser, and then stay close to your trigger point. And with a horde, the Shrieker will close and open, close and open, even if you're in cover, if you're within its aggro range. So that's that's this section done, right? Pretty simple. Now, the Ogre Room, one thing I will say, and I knew I was going to do this from the start, I'm not going for Platinum, because of this room. It's time-consuming. It's not difficult. It's just time-consuming. Uh, the, old, the the unstoppables here hate. So, as you can see, and, and I'm pretty sure there will be more a lot of people that know this strike. And they'll be like, oh, I hate this, I, I don't know. Which is most people's view on the Corrupted. Yay, Corrupted. You know, I remember the meme, you know, what you do when you load into the Corrupted and it's just go back to orbit. What we're going to try and do is take the, 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 the Hive, this guy, has got like, I mean, they'd be as well putting their names in Latin, you know. Uh, so, we're going to try and take the Hive Ogre first because it's easier to get out of the room with the Taken when you're in the Taken room. But also, if you take the Taken Ogre first and go into the Hive room, you have to clear the whole room because that's the area that the portal at the back here will take you into. So, if 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 you kill this guy, you go into the high, this area, the hive area, you'll have to clear every ad in this room before moving forward. Simply because, if you don't, when, when you're moving, you know, if, if you just, no, I'm just going to run away from them all. Uh, the ads will be behind you, shooting you while you're trying to deal with the next wave. Whereas if you come into this room, when you go through the portal back into the hive area, all the ads will have despawned. So, what I'm doing is, obviously I don't want to kill the Fallen, uh, the, the, I'm trying to see his name there, Iron? Wow. Uh, what's his name? What is that? Yachar? <laughs> Yachar. <laughs> what a name. Uh, you want to kill, <laughs> the, I don't know, I just can't say that name anymore. Uh, you want to kill the Hive Ogre first. Uh, but I've been... Chipping away at the Taken Ogre would just stick a stick a weather horde on him, just so that when you come back, very easy to kill. Uh, Let's try that and then just take the right hand side and just get out of here. The reason I, the reason I was like, oh, I'm not really going to go for platinum. There's no need to. There's, you're going to get an adept weapon anyway for completing the Grandmaster. So as you can see, we went through the portal, we can come back into this hive area, all the ads have despawned, whereas if it, we'd have done it the other way, we'd had to kill all the ads in here before we could move forward. So always take the hive one first. So we've got two unstoppable, I'm just looking to see if there's any heavy lying about for myself. No heavy, I don't have any heavy, but I'm not really using heavy to take the champions. Stick, stick a weather horde, then throw the green, you'll see the meltage. Now, a friend of mine 
this is going back quite a while ago, said to me, do you know that you stand a better chance? Have you noticed that you stand a better chance of, uh, of getting heavy if you finish champions? And I was like, oh, do you? I, I hadn't noticed. Just trying to get him to come around this corner, and then he teleports away, and then gets stopped. And I was like, oh, do you? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And you know something? In my experience, he's correct. So we don't have Lucent Finisher on. But I found that when I was finishing champions, I was getting heavy. So, and it's something, as I said, my friend told me quite a while ago, uh, finish champions or heavy ads and you stand a higher chance of getting heavy. Again, it's not an exact science, but that's been my experience. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and collect all of these ads uh, and then throw a storm grenade. Makes clearing this area a hell of a lot easier. So Right, in this area, you're going to have your first taste of Void Shields. We have nothing Void. So what we're doing is we're sticking them with uh, with Wither Horde. And then the Wither Horde will eat kind of through the shields. I should have charged that guy there so that it kind of blinded him. Thanks for that game, appreciate that. Uh... We'll just put that there. Hopefully that falls on the ground and finishes the stops the unstoppable. Uh, I put a weather horde on the void. The weather horde will help to eat through the shields. The shoulder charge kind of blinded them. It's kind of cross between blind and suppress. Uh, so where the where I'm shooting now? See, I've dropped that right on top of them. He'll start taking damage. He doesn't want any of it. So now I'm going to throw an arc grenade. The arc grenades go through the shields faster than Wither Horde. Because what it does is it attaches that arc stuff to them. And every time they take damage, just want, we don't want him to re get his shield back. Every time they take damage, uh, the arc... Uh, what, what, what is it called? Why do I always forget what these things are called? The the jolt. Arc jolt. Well, will chip away even more at the shield. And because match game, which is not going to be a thing next season, brilliant. Because of match game, I didn't really want to match arc solar and void shields. Because I wanted to focus on the boss. And that's what I have done. But with a horde mixed in with the the arc grenades, see this heavy down there. We want that. Uh, it's going it's to be massive against the void shields. My apologies if it seems like I'm going quiet during the commentary. You might have noticed in my voice. I am not well again. I don't know what's going on. 2023. Can you give me a goddamn break? This is my four, third or fourth illness since Christmas. Uh. So I'm coughing quite a bit and strained voice. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. So, overloads. Especially these, these hobgoblin overloads. I don't know what's going on with them, right? Because we've got overload. So, so the premise of an overload. Well, before I explain the premise, let's talk about this dude. Do not try and run past this guy. He has basically got an arc lord of wolves which will two burst you and he fires more than two bursts at a time so what i done was i stuck him with a weather horde from cover eventually he'll shield and then get out of there and this part here what i do is i run off and kind of look slightly to the left and i aim push him forward and back and whatever to kind of shave the first big platform you see what i mean so we go off, see that platform there? I look to shave that, and no problem, you'll just go straight down. <laughs> yeah, taking hobgoblins. So I'm um, this is what is professionally known in the in the game as as a break, what I'm doing right now. <laughs> when you shoot them, 
And naturally, you will get what's called a retribution blast. That's where those three kind of seeker blasts come at you. If you then do damage to them with a non-overload weapon, they will fire five retribution blasts at you. But here's the thing. If you stop them with an overload weapon, hit them with a weather horde and a grenade, then go straight back to your overload before they kind of go upright and keep them uh, overloaded, then they won't fire the retribution blast. Okay, so see there's the retribution blast. Dodged out the way of it. Put my grenade over there. I just want to keep him... I don't want him firing any more retribution blasts. Now you don't have to keep firing at him for the, the whole time. Right? You just have to fire until he stands. When he stands back up, it's like the first two seconds. If you put stuff on him then, he won't fire those retribution blasts. Now again, as I said, the storm grenades are really going to help with these. You see how they're ch the chain and the damage. Uh, there's one taking Acolyte gone. The other one, he wants to hide, but he's already been affected. And this guy is finishable. So I'm just going to get down here and finish him. So, we've got another guy up here. I'm just going to put the grenade up. All the way past past where he is, past everything, right off the platform. But the weather horde, when the weather because of weak and clear, when the weather horde breaks his shield, then he'll be weakened. Again, put a weather horde down on this taken acolyte. Another one just for safe measure. We've got three taken acolytes, all void shielded. One's an elite. They're just over here to the left. See, I've thrown a grenade. Let me just try to chain all that arc damage. There we go. And now that's just the elite. Now, you have to be careful with this elite. These these elites... Uh, he's taking hobgoblins, whether it's an elite or a champion. They, they have... Some of them fire... Have uh, stasis cannons. Oh, you're going to see it in, in a minute. This next, the next overload champion that we've got. And it was the same when we were coming down the big set of stairs and we jumped up to the left and took that overload. They will fire a stasis kind of cannon shot. And it has an area of effect. If you see that on the floor, don't try and jump through it. Because it will freeze you and you'll just go straight down. Uh, there it is right in front of us. All right. It's ravenous taken acolyte. It's not hobgoblin, but the cha some of the champions have got it as well. Watch out for every time you take like acolytes and stuff, they will drop that taking geyser. Uh, and 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 you see what it, it it will blast you off, but it also can blast your ammo if you have any ammo. So. What I do when I come here, I don't go down until I, I think there's only like one or two enemies left. I put a weather horde and a grenade over to the left. That took the two taken minotaurs out. And then I drop weather horde in there where I'm firing now. Because that's where the ads, one of the places the ads like to hide. The boss will always be right at the back where I'm throwing this grenade. He's actually the other side of that rock. So the grenade's doing a little bit, and Weather Horde is kind of there for the win. We'll try and drop it one. I think I've got to drop it a little bit further. This one goes right behind him. We want to force him out of his cover. And there he is. Philodron? Jesus Christ. Did, did they just, have they just got like a Scrabble set or something, or just like a box with just words in it, and they just pick it out? Right, what 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 letters are we going to use in this guy's name? Uh, if you don't kill the two taken Minotaurs on the left, one will teleport over to the right when you get to this point, so just be very careful. Again, be careful with these ravenous taken Vandals. One, if they hit you with the sniper, it hurts a lot, and... They, they they do fire very quickly. 
Now, I think it's the next guy. The reason I brought up these taken hobgoblins, the overloads, is because sometimes they don't play. Sometimes you stop them with an overload weapon and they fire the retribution blasts anyway. So you see here, stop him. And when I hit him again, overload weapon, no, it's like I've hit him with a weapon that's not overload. So now I get a chance to uh, have a go at this uh, taken hobgoblin. And now he's firing again. I haven't even shot him. So what we're going to try and do is uh, see there, there's that uh, stasis attack that you really want to watch out for. So we'll stop him. We're only going to get one shot. So we'll stick him with a weather horror grenade and then straight back to the overload. And this is the way that he should have responded to start with. Because I hit him as soon as he stood back up, he, uh, as soon as he stood back up, he couldn't f regenerate his health and he wasn't going to fire at anything. Now, here we are at the boss. The boss battle is actually quite a simple affair. So, basically you've got Sadia here, you've got to break her shield. Now, because we're doing it solo, we can't charge the orb by throwing it in between people, so it's going to take us four orbs to break our shield. Once we break our shield, a bunch of ads are going to come. The, play, the, the platform we're on now is where we're going to do most of our damage from, with the ads, not Sadia. But we are going to wait until the ads are gone before we actually engage Sadia, so that... Well, why would you engage her when there was tons of ads shooting at you? Now, if you're doing this in a team... If you do it this way, I'll kind of explain how you can one-phase Sadia in this room. So you don't have to go into the Ascendant room. So you kind of break her shield to start with. Come back over here, clear the waves of ads, and get another orb. Charge the orb and go over to the, the staircase at the back where the portal normally appears. She's already got, you've already broke her shield. You've got a second orb that's fully charged. So you start putting it on her. She will teleport to the other side. Use your once she shields again. Use your orb because you never damaged her here. You get more time to damage her on the other side. Easy one phase. So what we're gonna do is we started it by jumping across to the main platform. This is gonna be your cover areas, which is over here. Now watch out for Sadia. Sadia can get a look at you from the right hand side. So this is kind of when we're attacking, this where we are now is going to be where we are, right? But when the when these knights start throwing big shots over here, if you feel like you're in any kind of danger, just go behind this side. Only when Sadia is on the right-hand side, you'll understand what I mean, because when she's on the left, that is where she can see you. So I'm just going to throw another grenade there just to make sure there's no other ads there. As you can see, I've got numbers. Those ravenous taking scions, they are the they are the enemies that keep spawning the normal scions. While there's any of those elite ravenous scions up, uh, they'll keep spawning normal scions. So you want to make sure they're all dead. So we've came over here to get the orb, and what we'll do, as I've already said, watch out for those numbers three, three, four, four. You you want to hit three of them from here, and then the last one. Be careful because there is a, there is a glitch, and you might have heard about it. You might have experienced it where Sadia can one one shot you. As you can see there, I never hit over that one. I'm just checking, and there we go. So now I take the last orb. I think I missed this one actually. I was trying to be too clever. I thought I did. Thought it was right on her. Oh no, I didn't miss it. I thought I did. Once you break our shield, come back over here, making sure you're in cover from the right-hand side, and remember, uh, remember, uh, if you do take big damage, remember, you can always go around the other side. Now what we want to do is chain as much damage between these ads as possible. Now, you see now, normally, I don't miss that Weather Horde shot, right? You want to put a weather horde when the ads start spawning in. When the ads start spawning, you see I didn't shoot at that ad. You don't want to do any damage to Sadia. Right? 
If you want to leave Sadia alone, just let her chill. Just throw a grenade over there as well. Now when I say don't do any damage, if I was to if I'd have shot that knight, just even breaking the shield would have done a little bit of damage to Sadia, because he was too close to her. You want to make wait for all the adds to come to where we are now. Where, where, where I'm going to throw this grenade, that area there, wait for all the adds to come over here. When, you, when you're not sure if all the adds are, are, are dead, we know that there's another knight there. So I'm going to try and just drop a wither horde. I think that went too far. Oh no, it's just touched them. It's touched these, the back of them. And just, there he is. And then, one, once you're... I was positive. I was pretty sure that all the ads were dead there. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to try and land a wither horde shot. It was, it's kind of difficult to hit her, but you don't want to always attack from the same place. There we go, we got the weather horn, we throw my grenade, now we'll get our heavy out. And we're going to try and land as many shots as we can, you get about three to four shots here. See how I could still hit her while she was teleporting? And then I change sides, and then obviously now she's shielded. I change sides to get more shots off on her. Then I go back here, and now, because she switched sides, our place of cover is here. So again, Weather Horde, put that out, pre-pre-put that out. There's the ads. I'll drop a grenade right over there. And as soon as I can use my, my, uh, I, I, what I should have done there, you see how I'm chaining all that damage? S so many ads here. What I should have done was use my, that should have used I keep forgetting what it's called because I'm gonna be honest I don't actually use it that often uh, thruster I should have used my thruster as soon as I threw my grenade I have another grenade so I'm gonna throw that never threw it far enough really but it's still we still got a bit of chainage now, now the great thing about chaining the grenade is the grenade will tell you where, where the enemies are because it will chain to enemies that have kind of gone away into cover. Now, there's quite a few of these solar knights, right? Now they will run, they've got a route that they run, they, they come up here, where those two guys are, and they normally come up and then you can see them all jumping. That guy, where he went, that's the route they'll come up. This guy kind of, one of these guys got trapped over here. Is it him? Yeah. They come up to the right. They go all the way. They go all the way to the back. Is it this guy that got trapped? All the way at the back. I'm just going to throw a grenade to see if there's anything behind there. What a great grenade. Thrust her straight away. And there, there's the guy that I threw, threw a grenade to try and get him out. There he is. And I'll, I'll just try and drop a weather horde. Now you see this guy here, this guy got trapped down here, that's the first time I've seen that. But there's a, a whole bunch of these Taken Knights. There's a couple of places you need to check to make sure that they're not there. And that's where this guy is, is not one of the places, right? So as you can see, I'll just take him out and then I'll show you. So the places to check is at the back. And then you need to check to the right here, I can just see one. Guy going up top and jumping back. This is the route that they run. They'll always come back to the center here. If you're unsure whether they're hiding and you can't see them anywhere, throw a grenade at the top of the stairs. There he goes. He's wanting to do, an, do another circuit. So I was like, I think there might be more knights. I, I didn't think I killed them all. And there is another knight. Again, still not sure if that's the last one. So I'm, I'm waiting to see if he's going to jump. He hasn't jumped, so I'll throw a grenade. Thruster. Back into cover. Now, unfortunately, I threw it too much to the, too much to the right. And it got trapped behind that, that rock. I'm still sure, just looking to see if he's jumped across. I'm still sure he's there. 
So I'll, I'm going to go down here, thruster. This is another safe place. This I can just throw my grenade, and that that went. So because of where it is, see how he's now come out. My grenade will sort him out, and I'm sure that's the last guy. Now we're going to go over. Be careful for the 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 debris. We're going to go over and get this orb now. Now I've done this the first time, but I don't really comment on it. You can lead her shots, right? By letting her see you in one place and then throw him from the other, right? Missed that throw. So I can show over here. I've got the hat. So if I hadn't have went out to the right there, she'd have kept firing up at the last place she seen me. So we'll throw another one. No, she'll sh she'll she would have kept firing again. Up there, that's heavy here, I won't. So you can lead her. No, because I never done as much damage as I would have liked. Uh, I'm gonna try and stick up with the weather horde and do a a bit more. Now she will do her ground attack. She she just kept moving, so I decided not to not to bother with the weather horde. Got to be careful for this ground attack. And now we get one shot off on her. So we haven't done as much damage as I would have liked. Just be careful. Because I waited so long with trying to land Wither Horde shots, the ads had come in. If I hadn't have waited, the ads wouldn't have come in, we'd have been fine. One more push. And we are at the final section of the boss. Now, this first area, for me, these first ads... The Overlord and the Knight and yada yada. They were the most difficult. You see there? I, I don't understand why he was retribution in me. But like I said, I knew that there was... I just stun him again. Can I hit a Wither Horde over on this guy? He seems to have taken a bit of damage from the Wither Horde. I'll just see if I can get a grenade over on him. Oh yes, there we go. And again, the reason I think this is the most difficult part of this, obviously, until you get to the boss platform, is, so you've got these Taken Knights. Oh, nearly got myself into a bit of trouble there. Stop him. Weather Horde. And now I'll just put the overload back on. The reason why I think this is the most difficult part, just this section here, this first one. There isn't a lot of cover. You're dealing with this hobgoblin, a knight and a sniper. But Sadia can shoot you from over there. So it's like, you know, you, you're putting yourself in a bit of jeopardy. Now, from this moment on, there is cover. There is repeatable cover. There is. But you, again... Exactly what I said before, you can lead Sadia. So when you see her getting a bead on you, you can't you can't expect to just stay there. See? So if I show a hit me over over this side, she'll shoot at me here, and then I can I can maybe thought I could thread the needle there with that weather horde. I'll just throw a grenade, see if that'll make it. Yeah, and now I'll thrust it. Oh, and the knight's gone. The knight is the key to making Sadia move. Now you see here, Sadia's still shooting at me from miles away. I'm using these pillars, and then we're in my next cover. The solar shielded knights are the key to getting Sadia to move. She, once you kill the solar shielded knight, she will then move. And we took out the two taken vandals, which is great. Got an unstoppable up here, but. Getting Sadir to move, the most important thing is doing damage to the Taken Knight. Killing the Taken Knight. Once we get the Taken Knight to go, then Sadir will, once we get her to go from here, and it's the same with each section, she will then move up a section, which makes it a bit easier for you. Watch out for the debris. You know, don't try and jump while there's still a whole ton of, like, these massive rocks. You know, the last thing you want is, is to be uh, on a good run and then get hit by a rock.
So let's talk about the actual boss. The actual boss fight up to our left. Because all we're going to be doing here is trying to break the shield of this captain and go up and kill them and stop them. When you first get up there, Sadia's going to be floating about. You're going to get about six or eight scions spawn over to the right hand side where the first orb spawns. You want to take them out with your storm grenade and then we're just going to do laps. Right? Now, what will happen is, every periodically, she'll do her ground attack where there'll be a circle of light appear on the floor and then she'll blast you. Right? Now, you don't have to be standing in that light. Right? But you can, to a degree, negate the damage that you take from it. Right? I'm going to use my heavy if I need to here to just take him. Uh, a finisher. There we go. Uh, you can, by... Once you get the timing right, if you shoulder charge or or a thruster, just when she's about to do the blast, not the ground thing, then you won't take any damage. Or very minimal. There is a... There is a... a, a kind of bug where she one-hits you. I've had it here. Where she's one-hit me. It doesn't happen very often, but it, it obviously the fact that it can happen is bad enough. I think this is a toilet break, so it gives us a chance to explain the boss. So you get those scions, you take the scions out, do laps, grabbing the orb as you're running past it. Four orbs breaks a shield, but what you want to do, throw three orbs at her, three orbs at her, and then pick the last orb up. And you want to put distance between you and her. When you break her for the fourth time, when she's eligible for damage. Uh, you see, the, these are the Scions. I've thrown the grenade. Hopefully the grenade changes and just wipes out a whole bunch of them. But you're not guaranteed that it'll kill them all. So you just, whatever you're running from, just don't spend, don't spend too much time shooting. Just put your Wither Horde shots behind you. But just keep checking, making sure there's none left. So I'm just going to jump up and have a look. Yep, there's still, still one left. But he came back. He jumped off, actually. Uh, twice. <laughs> he jumped twice. <laughs> du <laughs> double the... Double the disaster. So now that all the sounds are gone, don't start picking the orb up. I, I would suggest until the sounds are gone. So we're just doing laps. You can grab the orb as you're running past it. And just... Make sure, make sure when you throw the orb, she's far enough away that she's not going to be pinging you. You know, you don't want to do it; she's right on you. And as you can see, time your shoulder charges. Uh, I'll just get another one off on her. That's two. Time your shoulder charges. You'll hear it's, You'll hear the noise when she's done. Like, it's like a winding up, kind of high-pitched winding up noise when she puts the stuff on the floor and then she screams and it's a scream that throws you. You don't want to be boosting in the air. You know, shoulder charging will get you out of the vicinity of it. Right, that's... She just needs one more, so I'm going to change direction. When you get to this point, pick the orb up. Now, it's different. You want to put distance between you and her. Because when you attack her, she needs to be far away. And you want to wait. You want to wait until uh, she's done her ground attack. So, now that we've done that. I'll just do that. Now that we've done that. Done a bit of damage to her. You get about four shots. Just get over these guys. Now what you're going to get is you're going to get a whole bunch of... You're going to get two Taken Knights. Just put that behind myself. Uh, get my thruster going. That's one taken Captain Gom. Just get out of here and then I'll throw my grenade back. You'll get two taken Captains and a whole bunch of Scions. Scions, they are a problem. The grenade will sort them out. It's the taken Captains. Now, this is the part where we are now. I was getting to this repeatedly using the strategy I'm telling you every time. I just could not take the Captains. And what I was trying to do, here's a, here he comes, I've got a grenade and I've got a weather horde for him. I'm just go. I'm going to run away from him, I'm not going to face him up because Sadia's after us and 
No, he does arc, she does arc. You've got that ground ch challenge. Before, you want to make sure that that ground challenge has been expelled before you do anything. Once the taken captains are down, it's easy money. So we're just looking to find this captain. You can stop. If she's far enough away from you, you can stop for a second. There he is. Now he's a solar shield. We've got solar scout. We'll break his grenade. And then weather horde. Oh, he's in trouble. And once he's gone, easy money. It is easy money. So, same thing again. You want to grab. You want to make sure you've got your super. That was really difficult to hit her because she flies right up in the air. I think I threw a couple until I worked out what I had to do. Uh, I threw a couple that completely missed. Now she has no melee, so if she is changing, you see this? When she goes up in the air like that, it's really difficult to hit her. But I worked out that what she'll do here, it's in the center here, what she will do is she'll go right across the map, it's like she follows you. She's actually taking your route. So what I decided to do was, you know, that was the last time, uh, that was the last time I think I tried that. So we go up, we get the orb, wait for her to come across, and then she'll follow you around the map on your level. Like this, see? Then it's easy. And now what we're going to do, see there it has hit, wait to see where she's going to go. I wasn't really, as long as you keep moving, you're you, you pretty safe. Safe being relative. You, She's not going to, unless you get that bug and there's nothing you can do about it. Right, she's up there, I'm not going to throw my orb. I want her to come down, am I going to get her? No, you don't throw the orb when she's up there. So now I'm going to go up here, get this orb. And now I'm on the same level as her. Hopefully she will chase me around the edge of the map. I'm just looking for her. So what's going to happen is we're going to we're going to hit away. There she is. And we get the shot. She's got to be on the same level as you to make it an easy, an easy hit. What we're going to do is we're going to hit her with another orb. That's three orbs. The next orb after that breaks her. Then I'm waiting for her to come there we go so three orbs make sure you're reloaded on your heavy I've got my super I'll just jump straight past her and she's like what is going on with this dude I'm reloaded I'm all good and I've got my super she's away up in the sky God knows what she's doing up there but what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for her to do her light attack on the ground because then we're gonna jump into the middle She'll stay on ground level. Right? So, there she goes. I've seen her coming across. So I'm going to jump, throw that, and then hit her with a couple of shots. We've got two more captains coming in, but we don't care. And this is why we keep our super. Finish her off with it. So, you want to hit a couple of shots when you break her. Make sure she does the ground attack. And then when she does it, get up into the center on the platform. Be above her. Break her shield. Couple of shots with your with, with your storm chaser. And then hit her with a super. And there you go, guys. That is a solo grandmaster. And as you can see, we didn't we missed a couple of champions on purpose. And we still got the adept malicious birthright. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And as you can see, there's my the last of my triumphs for a solo conqueror. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the run. I hope this helps some of you. Uh, we will have Glassway up starting next week because I've already done that. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Take it easy, guys. And I'll see you all in the next video.